So let's now go ahead and talk about the structure and functionality of the singleton pattern. So in this particular pattern, as you can see, it's it's really simple. It's, it's really kind of like, where do you put the if statement? That's kind of the essence of the singleton pattern. The intent of the pattern, as per the Gang of Four book, is to ensure a class has only one instance and pro provide a global point of access to that one instance. So in our case, for example, we're going to have a reactor be our one instance. You should apply this pattern, or you should consider applying this pattern when there has to be exactly one instance of a class, and it must be accessible from a well-known access point. Likewise, if you want to be able to extend that one and only instance by subclassing, and clients can use the extended implementation without knowing or caring what the actual subclass is. You can do that all very nicely and transparently. So here's the structure of participants. This is arguably one of the simplest gang of four patterns because you basically have a class and it's got a method called instance that's static. And as you'll see, the options class and the reactor class are examples of such classes. And when you make an invocation on the instance method, the static method, it'll check to see if the static field of the static data member, which we call it unique instance in this case, is null or not. If it is null, we'll allocate the one and only instance of the singleton. And in either case, we're going to return the unique instance. So it was either allocated right then using what's called lazy initialization. So you do a first time in check and initialize this the first time in, um, or it was already initialized before, in which case you'll just return what was there. In either case, you're returning what was there, but you may have just initialized it for the first time. So you'll also see that you only create instances of these objects when, in fact, they're actually used, unlike a global variable, which is created conceivably always when the program starts to run as opposed to when it's actually accessed.